morning, everyone. We are back for another edition of Cafecito and Conversation. I'm here with my friends, Clarissa Hidalgo. Did I say that right? Yes, <laughs> yes. I will, I will, and I will be honest, not everyone says it right, but you, you got it right, girl. Thank you. So I always have to double check because I know that when people say Domenica, they always chop it up up and i was i'm like always self-conscious of pronouncing other people's name because i know how i you know struggle and other people struggle and so cool awesome i you know yeah i was like okay i'm gonna get it right i'm gonna get it right i always know someone who knows like like a little bit about the our culture and stuff when they when they call me clarissa you know what i mean right like clarissa hidalgo you know what i mean when they put a real a real accent on it because my grandma always said it like that so i love it i love it and so i'm super excited to have you on so just to reintroduce myself my name is dominica escatel i'm founder of chicana inc and we do um quarterly in-person sessions we do like a speaker event and because through covid we pivoted and we got creative and I thought, you know what? I'm going to do little cafecito chats. And then I thought, wait a minute. I can really have this as an opportunity to do a podcast session. So even though I always say we're here for a cafecito chat because that's really the atmosphere that I wanted to cultivate. But this is a live recording for a podcast. And so I'm excited that if you're viewing us or if you're listening, that you're here to connect and we're just going to dive in. Clarissa, can you introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Clarissa Hidalgo and I am a yoga instructor. I am a yoga teacher. So that's what I do now. I'm a mom. I have two girls. Um, I'm engaged. I'm about to marry my wonderful, um, my wonderful uh, high school sweetheart. Uh, I think okay. we've been for like 13 years. You know, that's how it goes. I don't know why. My grandma and grandpa were like that too. They were together for like 40 years and they just didn't do anything. But yeah, so nice to be here with you, everyone. I'm so excited you're here. And so we're just going to dive in. So tell me, and actually, I don't think we've ever talked about it. How did you get into yoga? Well, so I myself, um, just a little bit about me. So when um, when I first um, when I first started yoga, it it was after I had went to college. It was after I was out of like my younger years and stuff. I guess out out of my early early 20 years and stuff. Um, but I actually started it um, because I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. So multiple sclerosis is an autoimmune disease. It affects um, just a little, like a little history. Mm -hmm. um, it affects the brain and it affects um, in turn different kind of um, functions and movements and um, things you have going on in your body. So depending on where the lesion is in the brain, that's where it's affecting things on your body. So I was diagnosed with MS um, when I was 19 years old. And um, when they diagnosed me, it was the first time I had ever heard of MS. I was like, mm -hmm. what? what's this? Like, what's MS? Um, so I was diagnosed with MS and everyone was like, you know, where did this come from? How did this, whatever, it was a huge mystery. And for a long time, I chose to ignore it too. I was like, no one wants to hear, no one wants to hear, it's my daughter. <laughs> no one wants to hear much about this. You know, I don't really wanna, you know, do much for it and stuff. So I'm just gonna ignore it. Um, I ignored it for a long time. I graduated, you see Merced. Okay, baby. Isn't daddy right there? Daddy's right there? Yep. Go baby. <laughs> so yeah, I graduated. Um, I was like going to UC Merced. I graduated in three years. I was doing a lot of stuff. And so when um, I went to UC Merced, I had a relapse and I had a relapse and I had a relapse. 
And I continued to relapse until um, my doctor was like, you're not doing good. We're going to have to fit you for a walker. Um, just a minute. Having kids. No, so I love it. You know what? It adds um, flair to our yeah, session. It's real. It really is. It's yeah. real. It's real life. So, um, they, you know, my doctor was like, you're not doing good. Um, you know, you're you're stressed, you've still got lesions on your, in your brain and stuff. So they were like, we're going to have to fit you for a walker. Um, cause my walking abilities had declined a lot. My abilities had just declined in general. Um, and I was like, man. And when I went to UC, you, I mean, when I, when I went to UCSF, which is where I was going for my doctor's appointments, when I went back to them, um, I met a man who was, in Turlock, where I was living at the time. And he was like, have you ever tried yoga? He had MS too. It was like an MS clinic that I was going to. And I was like, no, no. And he was like, you want to try yoga? I'll pick you up, blah, blah, blah. Because I didn't drive at the time. I, I had put my car on a non op I was like, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to mess with this stuff. So um, once I did that stuff, I started doing yoga slowly. He started picking me up. I started gaining strength. I got my car back. I started doing things. And um, I really liked it. I really liked yoga. And then um, I got pregnant. I got pregnant with my daughter. I was in and out of grad school for my MSW degree this entire time. I was in and out of grad school, but I eventually decided to leave the degree. I got halfway through, um, 20 grand in debt, of course. Of course <laughs> don't, yeah. don't think about it, don't think about it. But um, I did all that and then I decided, you know what, um, this isn't worth it. Cause I had gotten pregnant. I got pregnant with my first daughter and it was really unexpected and it, it changed my life. Having a baby, you know, changed my life and stuff. So um, after that, I decided, you know what? My health isn't worth it. My life isn't worth it. Social work just wasn't, um, it wasn't worth my health. Right. It wasn't worth, you know, m my stress and different things like that. My daughter, you know, different priorities I now had. So I decided not to go with the, the degree anymore, not to go with my master's in social work anymore. And um, I went into training for my yoga teacher training. Um, I did it for nine months, okay. give or take, and um, it was through I Am Yoga Wellness Studio in Turlock, and I really loved it. I mean, I fell in love with yoga, and it really did come natural to me. My MS had really gone into, into a sort of remission with it, especially with pregnancy as well. Right. So because I had been practicing yoga when I was pregnant, prior to my pregnancy, and afterwards now, I was like, this is just, this is keeping me going. This is good for my MS. This is just good for me. This is good for everyone. So you know what? I'm just going to go with this. Uh, so I think April 2017, I got certified um, as a yoga instructor. And then I think... Um, I think by like June, I was teaching mm -hmm. and I started out, it started out um, just hitting the ground, you know, I mean, right. studio after studio after studio teaching in Modesto, um, some studios I liked, some studios I didn't, you learn, you learn, you learn. Um, I was living in Merced, I'm, I still live in Merced right now, so it was a little bit of a commute for me. Um, so I was always looking to kind of transform it for me. That's for sure. I was always looking to transform my career for me. Um, and so that kind of led me to lead, leave going from studio to studio to studio after that, um, to start my own Clarissa Hidalgo Yoga, um, doing privates. I started with um, some of my dear friends that have multiple sclerosis, some of my dear friends that have um, fibromyalgia, working with them, working with their difficulties and things like that. Um, I started working with regular yoga clients as well. I would do studio, but I was really selective after that. Okay. Um, 
I learned my lessons about, you know, what to do and what not to do. But um, yeah, and so now that's, I really don't do studio anymore. Um, I contract with Dignity Health now, and that is primarily what I do. I am now a yoga instructor for them twice a week. I teach accessible yoga and prenatal yoga for them. Okay. Um, so that's kind of what I do for right now. And I have my two girls. I'm a stay-at-home mom. Right. So, yeah, that's me. <laughs> Girl, I love that. What a powerful story. Thank you for sharing. And, you know, part of doing these cafecito conversations is that I really love that we get real, raw, and authentic, and none of our conversations look the same. And so I really appreciate you being able to step into that vulnerable state and share that story because I always feel like there's power in our stories and it's totally okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab some water. Okay. Okay. Really okay. Yeah. And, and so that's just the opportunity that we have here when we're doing these live sessions is that it is real life. It is real. It is raw and it's authentic and being mothers, being tias, like we're just going through the moment. And you know what? That is part of being able to have grit and goals that we're just being we, that we can share that because I think lots of times you know being mothers like it's real life it is real life and I have a, a, friend, a friend that I made not too long ago we did a podcast session as well and her daughters were on the video and you know uh, she had to sing to her in the moment and and I keep saying like, it is okay because we're here to support each other. And that's how it is, you know? It's, how it's, it it's You know what? It's a hundred percent real and people love real. Like <laughs> look at Cardi B, like <laughs> right. you know, look at all these people who just don't care. Yeah. Right. Can say hi? Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, mom is working, okay? <laughs> It's literally the behind the scenes that nobody shows you. So I think it's important that we show this and talk about it because I am notorious for doing these videos at 11, 1130, you know, um, after full day of doing, you know, Dominica life and then focusing on the stuff that I need to focus to move my business forward. And so this is a part of it. Mm -hmm. So I, I love being able to share that and how, as females, we just go over, under, around, you know, to just do it. We have to, yep. <laughs> yeah, and so thank you. Thank you for sharing your story on yoga. And I think it's so important because, you know, especially cultural, like, culture-wise, you know, I didn't grow up in a family that explored different types of exercising and the benefits of what that would ha have in our health. And so mm -hmm. I didn't really get introduced to yoga as an adult. And that was that I went to a convention in San Diego and there was a uh, group of ladies, two ladies that did a yoga for kids in the classroom book and i absolutely mm -hmm. fell in love with the concept it was a through z yoga poses with animals and the alphabet mm -hmm. and i um thankfully i had a really good friend that had a higher position there and she said dominic i really think that you can develop this into a training for other teachers to teach the kids in the classroom. And so mm -hmm. in my own classroom, when I was teaching, I would do yoga and everyone, it was just like, <laughs> you know, it was like high, high energy, high intense. And then it was like down low. <laughs> really? no, totally. I mean, I totally relate because I did it with this one's classroom when they were all still in school and they were, I mean, they were great. They were super entertained. They were preschoolers, you know, they were like four year olds. They loved it. Right. And so, yeah, I, it, I didn't pick it up as a habit for me personally for yoga because I have um, a couple of injuries going on and it just this, depending on the stretch, like it just kind of um, doesn't work well, but there's different poses that I will wake up and do some meditation with that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I and that's what I specialize that. in, girl. That's what I specialize in right there. 
So I'm yeah. going to go ahead and add you to um, our Dignity Health yoga page after this. Um, so yeah, well, my videos and stuff like that. Um, but that's what I do. I specialize in working with injuries. I specialize in working with different illnesses. Mm -hmm. I work with fibromyalgia. I myself have multiple sclerosis. Um, a lot of my clients always have different kind of things. And everyone always has something um, that draws them to things for one thing or another. And right. I think yoga is a really good exercise for injuries. Personally, I think yoga is good for everything. But yeah, yeah. No, definitely. We'll have to talk. We'll have to talk. And so what with me, what's going on is um, I have TMJ in the jaw. And so uh -huh. like if I'm bending down and tying my shoes, I feel like my jaw is going to fall off. And so mm -hmm. that's where it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. But we'll definitely talk because this is what's this about, right? Um, mm -hmm. For sure. And so what have you found that really has been a motivating factor for you when you're when you're teaching others or like you said, you had some hiccups with some studios like what keeps you going besides like I know the benefits that it that it's giving you. But is there anything that you can share or maybe like a story that um, gives us a little bit of a picture of why why you continue to do what you're doing, especially in a time like this? Mm -hmm. Well, um, like I said, like you were saying, I went from studio to studio. It wasn't the greatest experience all the time. Some mm -hmm. studios are great. Some studios aren't the best. Um, but when I got contracted with Dignity Health, it was a really great thing. But what I would say, excuse me, has always stood out to me is like, um, this past year during Christmas time, okay. like um, one of my guy clients and he would religiously show up to my classes at Dignity Health when there was only one person, you know, and he would do the exercises. He would never really question me and stuff. And um, and like at the end, he ended up bringing me a box of chocolate or whatever. He asked me if I like chocolate and he said to wait there as he went to the car. Oh my Go. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, you know what I mean? I do it for little things like that. Right. I do it for things like her school so they can know what it's for and they can know that people do this. And it and and Mexicans do it, Laotians do it, every you know what I mean? Everyone is open to wellness. You know, I do it for the mamas, you know, who just who don't have any time and just need to make their own accommodations you know that's really that's really what i get you know i love it so it's would you say it's almost like a universal language and it's like a, an opportunity to connect because of the same thing you know totally totally i would totally say um you know just like love speaks all languages so right. does yoga in a way mm -hmm. i love that that's amazing um, so when you're trying to explain to someone and I, and I say it more in the sense of like coming from a Latino family and really like having a little bit of a stereotype when it comes to yoga and all that, um, you know, I know some people, they get, they dive a little bit deeper and, and, you know, do, um, sound baths or breath work or crystals, you know, how, how do you get how would you explain to people that, um, you know, it's about health and wellness, you know, and about a um, more than beyond of what people would say it's a stereotype, you know, like, how do you how do you explain that? Um, like, I think the best way for people to know what yoga is all about is for them to experience it personally. You know, I think that is the um, the best way to make it happen is to feel it in your body, to feel what's happening. Um, but really, you can tell someone, you can tell someone, you can tell someone, you know, I'm a Chicana too, and I'm like, you know, mom, this is really good for your back. You know, my my husband's like trying to convince his dad to do it for his back too, you know. You can try and convince all of these different cultures, um, but sometimes it's not until like they go to the doctor and the doctor's like, you need to do yoga. 
you know, and then you're like, oh, okay. you know what I mean? Like, okay. I know. And, and, um, and I will say as well, like when I got contracted by Dignity mm-hmm. and um, my, my grandfather, he, you know, he, he held that a little more highly. And my grandmother would always be like, well, you need to listen to her. She works for the hospital. And I'd be like, yeah, that's true. Um, but even before that, you know what I mean? It's hard. It's hard to convince people. It is. But I think the best thing to do is just to ask people to bring down their barriers and join you, you know? There's not much yeah. more. Um, same thing with kids, you know? Try to get them to join you. Um, but I will say language barriers can be an issue sometimes. That's why we try to have translators or, you know what I mean? Always trying to speak the same language. Yeah, yeah. No, I love that. That's. Um... That's great. That's a great tip for anybody who's watching or listening. Just a simple invite for that person to experience it. You know, because I feel like um, recently I have been talking to a lot of different people um, through the podcast or just different, um, you know, scenarios that I've been into. And it kind of seems like there's a reemergence of really valuating. Um, I was gonna say evaluating, but not that's not the correct word, like really appreciating our roots. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I have a couple of friends that are really trying to revive like, um, cult, you know, plant-based medicine. And, you know, I had a couple of conversations with them and talking about, yeah, I remember when, you know, uh, my tummy hurt and my mom gave me a tea and then it was better. Mm-hmm. And it was like, that's, that's our roots. And I think when it comes to, holistic wellness. And I kind of, um, you know, think of like yoga as something more natural, you know, it's working with your body and stretches and movement, not that any another form of exercising isn't but, you know, it, to me, when yoga, like there's no exercise machine, or, you know, it's something where you can connect more with who you are and then, you know, collectively with the group that you're working with as well. It's just a different type of connection. And I love that you said that just a simple come with me and experience it because just having, you know, the, um, you know, the abuelitas and the deep rooted, I don't know. Que es esto? No sé, I don't know. Um, I like to be able to just say, Oh, well just come with me, try it. And it's hard and it's hard to convince them. But you know what? I don't ever like I had there was I mean, and this is just an example, like there was an an older Mexican lady. She would come to my house, my uh, my classes and she would come with her daughter, her. um, They were, you know, they were both a little a little bit older. Okay. Um, She would come and her daughter, you could tell her daughter was making her. Her daughter was bringing her, you know what I mean? Her daughter was wanting her to um, try this and and because she had heard and blah, 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 you know what I mean? And she had heard about my class and the fact that I work with older individuals and individuals with disabilities and stuff like that. Okay. So when she came to my class, her mother was very upset, very stern, always, you know, the whole class almost, well, not the whole class, but half the class, you know, just, just super, you know, furrowed eyebrows and everything. She wasn't happy, you know? And she, um, she'd she be like, well, I'm not gonna get on the floor. And I'd be like, no, 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 no. And because of my training, I'm able to get them in chairs and stuff like that. So when you're able to meet people where they're at, I found in my practice, like you meet people where they're at. You don't chase them, you let them come. You know what I mean? Right. Like they need to watch the class first. You let them watch the class first, it's okay. You know, they can do it, whatever makes them feel comfortable. But if you let them take it on their terms, they will they will be welcome to coming back and to continuously doing it. And she came back and she came Hello. back and she came back and she came back and she came back. And her mom at the end of that first session, uh-huh. would just smile on her face. <laughs> So that's what I do it for. That's, right that's what I do it for. I love it. I love it. Oh my goodness. That is such a great story. Like that's the best. And so, you know, as I'm hearing you speak, what advice would you give to someone that is wanting to start out in that field? Like wanting to be an instructor, 
Like, did you have a mentor or did you literally just try to figure out yourself? Um, I, I would say both. Like, yeah. I would say you always have a community, you know, whether it's a Hispanic community, whether it's a girl tribe, whether it's whatever, you know, a yogi community, you always have your little community, you know, right. and different communities for different things, you know, different Chicano community, a different yoga community, a different mom community, you know, all of these different little things. And really, um, what did it is like coming together and knowing that you have that community is just I mean, it's beautiful. It's beautiful that you have that to go back to, right? Rely on whenever you need something. Um, but yeah, I'm so sorry. What was the question again? Let no, me you got it. <laughs> no, let me make sure I like bring it back. <laughs> really? No, 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 yeah, just you know, to be able to give advice to somebody that may be exploring that as a field. And um, you know, I think it was important that you pointed out about building a community. I think we all need to have a tribe that really supports us and what we do. Um, so that is key. Yeah, yeah, no. And my advice, honestly, is just, you need to do what your heart wants. So if this just isn't for you and you feel it, maybe you just don't do it. Just like I did with social work, you know, it wasn't for me. I thought it was for me. I mean, I had everything planned out. You know, I thought I was going to do everything right. Um, this is the way it was going to go. But sometimes that's just not the way it goes. Um, so my first advice would be to listen to your heart, listen to yourself. If something isn't working for you, just don't go with it. I mean, right. just, you know what's right. Like, trust your gut. Like, if you learn anything in this world, it's to trust your gut. And the older I get, the more I learn that that's really, really really important um and other than that i would say keep your finances straight keep your money straight you know take care of yourself girl i mean you're not you know you're not 18 anymore you're not 16 anymore you have to you know you got to do taxes now you got to take care of that stuff right um and that's that's a good point i think often we don't talk about the business side of it or the money piece of it especially if we come from a family that really didn't um, set you up for success? Big time, big time, <laughs> I did not, I did not. So like on one side, you know, on my um, my Caucasian side, my white mm -hmm. side, they, you know, they were farmers and stuff and they had a bigger business and they always took care of those things like that. Um, but we never really talked about it. We never really talked about it either. I know they did it and stuff. We never talked about specifics. And um, and we were well off on my dad's side. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we never talked about money, really. It wasn't an issue for me. I didn't get an allowance or anything. I had to work for my dollar. But, you know, we didn't really yeah. struggle with money. With my mom and stuff, I mean, there was nine of us. I was the oldest of nine with my mom. And it's like... It was always money, money, money. But because there were so many kids, we always kind of, you know, we always kind of had it coming in in a way. But it's important. It's important to keep track of those things. Because when I went to college and when I started getting free money, I was like, oh, it's money, you know? Right, right. But really, really, it's money and you need to take care of it. And you know, my spouse helped put the down payment on our house with his college money. It's like, you need to be smart. And I didn't realize that till mm, I was pretty old. I'm not even going to say when. Yeah. Uh, you know, but by the time I realized that, I was like, man, I should have, I could have saved so much money if I would have known. Like, it would have, it would have been so great. But, you know, that's the past. <laughs> Right. No, that's a good story. And I think that that's all we can do, right? It's just acknowledge it, you know, in a sense, forgive ourselves. And then how, like moving forward, how am I going to change it? And it awesome. really took a lot of, um, I guess, for the lack of a better word, like trial and error for me to figure it out. Because I can remember, I didn't grow up with an allowance, but I can remember the first time I asked, I asked for $5.00. Because all my friends were talking about their allowance and I didn't have an allowance. And 
you know, coming from a Latino background, like literally I remember my dad looking at me like I was crazy. Like, what was I talking about allowance? But he's I, I was in high school, girl, and my dad would still give me like $20 a month. And I was like, man, you're just uh, hi. <laughs> yeah, he gave me, he for a while, he would give me money here and there, but mm -hmm. literally it wasn't enough to really call it an allowance. But that's how we're taught money, right? Right. That's how a lot of us are taught money in the Latino culture. In the Latino household, we're just not giving it. We're right. just We're just taught not to spend it. We're not taught to spend it wisely. We're not taught to spend it on the things that we need. Right. You know, we're not taught different kind of things like that or savings. You know what I mean? Like, I remember, like, I don't really think my mom ever really had a savings or anything like that. But mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I know. That's a whole nother episode <laughs> of a podcast. Like, that Basically. could be a whole episode in itself. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I can totally relate. And... Yeah. So um, as we wind down in time, I know that we definitely need to come back and talk some more. So for sure, because I, I know I miss you. You've been seeing you over, you know, over internet as nice. I know. And then we have plans. So for everybody, mm -hmm. you know, we have a plan looming of, of coming together and doing something related to wellness for this mm -hmm. community. And so, you know, that will still happen because I feel like through COVID, it's very much needed mm -hmm. right now. Yeah. yeah. And so definitely look out for that if you're watching or listening. Um, and then also let everyone know um, oh, I want you to end with sharing one thing that you're excited about through um, through just the next half of the year and then let everybody know how they can connect with you through social media. Like, where can they find you? Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, so I already typed my handle in. So any okay. of you want to look me up on Instagram, um, you can look me up on there too. You can look me up on um Facebook under the same name, Clarissa Hidalgo, Clarissa Hidalgo Yoga Instructor, I think it is on Facebook. Um, okay. I can put that too when I'm done. But to look forward to, um, honestly, who knows how long this is going to last. But right. you know what? I'm thankful. I'm thankful to have a job through this. I'm thankful to be working while all these studios are shutting down and while people aren't employed and stuff. So... Um, I actually just started a prenatal yoga class with Dignity Health. Um, I run Wednesdays um, accessible yoga with them. Okay. Prenatal yoga is Mondays. Um, and then I sub for their classes. They have a whole, like, this little page. And I'm going to go ahead and put the handle in. I'm going to look it up first, and then I'm going to put the handle in. Yeah, yeah, type it in. So if you're yeah. watching um you can see the links in the chat box and if you're listening if you're a listener we will add that to the podcast notes yeah and so this is a group um that you can join and it's got live videos every single day okay um, of zumba and yoga how fun and yeah, and it's every single day we've got those videos and you can replay them as well. Okay. And so you can join this. I'm an admin for this page as well. Okay. So if you ever wanted to join, just go ahead and click on it and I'll add you. Okay. Um, it's meant for people in Merced, but I've got some other people on it too. <laughs> okay. Okay. Awesome. That's great. So I'll make sure to add that. Um, those and other, but other than that, I'm like trying to think what I have going. I'm just, I'm just letting it flow, girl. This is what I'm right. doing. I'm doing this kind of stuff. I'm doing, you know, I'm spending lots of time with my girls, lots of time with my husband. Um, well, soon to be husband. I'm getting married next month. <laughs> I'm so I know, right? <laughs> Later. Um, <laughs> hey, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> That's the way we do it. That yeah. my mother, my mom has nine kids and has never been married. So that's just the way we do it. You know. There you go. There that you go. <laughs> I love but yeah, other than that, I mean, follow me on social media. Keep up with the page and and um, you know, just look out for things. Keep up. 
Awesome. I love it. And well, with that said, you can connect with Chicana Inc. on Instagram and Facebook under Chicana Inc. And we will see you on the next episode. All right. Bye, everyone.